G'day everybody, Peps and J-Dog here for a massive round eight. Tipped out your tips every week just the way you want it. J-Dog, massive round of football. It all starts tonight. Richmond versus Geelong. We know it's the grand final rematch. We know it could have been if Dusty didn't play like he did last year. Could have been a different scenario all again. The whole Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors scenario. Will Geelong get their revenge tonight or will it be the Pussycats uh, falling over and scurrying back into their handbags? Peps, good evening and good evening, listeners. Peps, this feels a bit like uh, another Leo movie, De- uh, Deja Vu. Uh, it was actually Denzel Washington. Yes, Deja oh. Vu. Uh, <laughs> we are like, close. Look, uh, just we'll keep it simple. We're transparent here. That's why you love us. Uh, we did record last night and for some reason the host of our podcast lost the episode. So we've had to re-record and so you're getting the condensed version. So it's simply this. The Tigers going in, they've been playing some pretty good footy over the last couple of weeks. They took on a challenger, which was the Doggies last week. Yeah. It was a shame to see the Cats go down in Sydney, but, you know, the best team had to win. <laughs> uh, look, I'm just going to go with the strength of Richmond. They're back at the G. Yeah. Um, the Cats, I think, will be a little bit scarred from last week. Mm-hmm. Dangerfield still not back. That is going to be a massive hole to fill. I've got, a, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a seven-leg multi on this game for the Punters Club. So we're, we've got a fingers crossed that this one's going to come in. But I'm very, very bullish on the Tigers continuing their winning ways this week, and I reckon by about four goals. Oh, okay. So just like last season, this is sort of the seat. This is the round where the Tigers started to make their move. So I'm with you, Peps. Tigers by five goals for me. Beautiful. All right, let's move into Saturday action. Belter of a game. This one. Talking about even Stevens in a game that's potentially going to set one team alight. And one team are going to be looking back on another wasted season. We're talking Twin about towers. the Suns. Twin We're towers. talking about, oh, the Suns, the pair of kings. <laughs> Far and Wang are going to be playing tomorrow, as well as Ben and Max. The Suns versus the Saints, 145 our time, Metricon Stadium. Look, the Saints came back. Mind you, they didn't beat much. And the Suns played fantastic at the MCG. Mind you, they played Collingwood, which you could almost say wasn't much either. But if I had to put it down, who's been probably more consistent out of the two teams this year? Funny enough, I'm going with the Suns, mate. I reckon there's just something about them at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Going back up to back up to Queensland, it's going to be a little bit warmer up there. The Saints, the pressure's all on them not to capitulate again. Ryder, once again, coming back makes a massive difference. But when you got the big fella down there, Mr. King, Mr. Ben King, the real king, King of clubs, the king of goals. Um, when the yeah, ball goes um, down there. Oh, when the ball goes down. Oh, don't. It gets down there. They've got Corbett. They've got Rankin. They've got Alice. They've got everything. I'm going with the Suns. I'm going with the Suns. And they're going to do it easily. By how much? How many goals, Peps? Five goals. Five. 30 pointers, eh? Mm hmm. Alrighty, oh, fuck! Well, you're in the uh, you're on the on the Jack Daniels. Must be kicking in about now. Yep, the Jack Daniels are <laughs> kicking in about now, and the, <laughs> the margins are going to get bigger with every contest. <laughs> um, I'm going to go St Kilda by two goals. Okay, let's go into the two ten game, which is another one of those really ooh, tight as tight games. GWS, once again, another team have playing good footy over the last couple of weeks. Whitfield made a massive difference to their midfield last week. Yeah, huge. Essendon, once again, the kids are playing some pretty good football. I, I did tip uh, Essendon to be finishing in my bottom four, and, and I think if they continue the way that they're going, they're not going to be bottom four. Far yep. from it. Yeah. At some stage, the kids have to tire a little bit. Thing is, with the Giants, they're going to be they're, they're much bigger bodies, and they're just going to smash them around the packs and. It's unfortunate that Jesse Hogan looks like he's going to be out. So that was that's going to it's not going to sway my tip, but I think the Giants it's going to reduce the margin quite considerably, and I'm going the Giants by five goals. Brave man, I'm going to go Essendon by two goals. Why? Um, I liked what the kids bought to the game yes uh, last week. Sorry. Um, and there's no rhyme or reason. I just don't have trust in GWS. I'm sorry. I just don't have trust in Oh, them. dude, they've got Toby. They've got the Toby star. How could you not love Toby Green? Best player ever Mate, to pull on a GWS jumper. Fer- they had keys to the Ferrari now for about seven seasons. And I'll tell you what. In every season. All right. 4.35 p.m. our time at Marvell Stadium. Could be the game of the round, and not maybe for the football interest, but the byproduct of this. North <laughs> versus Collingwood. 
Both last week against the D's were very, very honourable. I know we, we talk about that honourable loss crap all the time, but what they displayed last week showed that Noble's plan has got some merit to it and what mm. they're going to be able to go forward. Collingwood haven't got any plans. They've got no direction, okay? Are you There's nervous? Not, uh, my nervous? If I was Collingwood, I would be shitting bricks right now. I, I, would, want, I would want it to be raining heavily. Yeah. And it won't yeah. make a difference because they're going to be playing indoors. So there's nothing that's going to stop them. <laughs> Pendlebury, unless they bring in Mason Cox, if I'll put it this way, if they bring in Mason Cox, North are a shoe in because they might as well play with 17 people on the ground. Oh, that's a big call. Oh, mate, I tell you what, I'm going North and I'm going North by five goals in this one as well too. I think they're going to do a runner over Collingwood and wait till Monday. If the pitchforks and the knives aren't out, the scarabs – and the big katanas from the Mortal Kombat film will be slicing and dicing <laughs> Chen Kenichi style on Nathan <laughs> Buckley if they go down this week. Yeah. Um, more to lose out of these two games, I think. I think North have played, have been in most games that they've played this season other than a couple of, of them. Early ones, yeah. Um, yeah, Collingwood, oh, I think they've, once again, it's another round we're going to be talking about how they've got most to lose, and this is one of their games for them as well. They cannot lose this game. Oh, yes, they can. You watch, they will. <laughs> All right, 7.25 p.m. tomorrow at the MCG, and everybody loves the G. My team, the Melbourne Demons versus the Swans of Sydney. I think the biggest thing to come out of this is a couple of things. First and foremost, good old John Longmire will be sitting in the box by himself. No assistant coaches are allowed to come down to the game due to COVID. Mm-hmm. So he'll be doing everything in by himself. So I think that's going to make a massive, massive impact on what he's going to be able to do. The other thing is uh, Isaac Heaney is going to be out, but we know Buddy Franklin and Dean Rampey are going to be coming back in. The D's are going to be out. Uh, going to be out. Uh, Tom Monson, no, unfortunately, no did his new last be. week. Jones is being dropped. Baker's being dropped. But they do bring in James Harms as well. And they're also bringing in Harrison Petty to bring in that centre-half back spot, which I've got plenty of faith in as well too. So, okay, look, one. last night I had a look at this and I went, oh, geez, I'm just scared. And, I'm, and I was going with Sydney, but – I've had a couple of confidence boosters. I uh, had a bit of a sit down with my uncle Jack, mm-hmm. and uh, we had a chat. We've had a bit of a drink mm-hmm. together. And I'm going with the D's, and I'm going with the D's by uh, oh. funny enough, five goals. Rightio. Um, like every race fan out there of the horses, get down and watch Buddy Franklin play if you can get down to the MCG. It's going to be one of the last times we're going to see him down in Melbourne. I reckon this yep. season or yep. forever. I reckon he's. he's He's, he's still dangerous. That's the thing. He's 48 years of age. Um, he's got a hot wife. And um, look, he's, he's got travel- plenty of things going for him. Doesn't travel. doesn't really travel outside of Melbourne. I mean, doesn't travel of outside of So he must know it's a farewell tour. It's, um, it could be a bit like, bit like Kiss. Um, yep. It'll be his 17th Goodwill tour. Uh, a bit um, like Saintly. But yeah. Tomlinson, Peps, I'm going to say it here. What an absolute. What, what, what a young player who has perspective on the world. Oh, mate. Did his knee and it's not about this. Look at this kid here has got these got this thing here. Look at Neil Danaher has got his things here. I just – his post was amazing. No, he is he, – when he first came to the club last year and played his first few games on the wing and it wasn't working, we've gone, what have we got ourselves into? We throw him at centre-half back. Mm. He had 21 one on one so far this year and only lost one of them. Like we're not yeah. going to realise how much of a loss this guy is going to be. And you just watch a couple – like I said, I was watching a couple of replays over the last couple of hours. Yeah. And you just see how much of an impact that he allows Lever and May. So it's going to be big, big yeah. shoes to fill from Petty. But Petty's yep. been sitting in the wings for quite a while. So I think he'll be able to do it quite well. And I just think the firepower for Melbourne up forward is going to make a, a massive difference. Oh. Papley's, Papley yes. is one that Melbourne will have to watch as well. Uh, and Heaney being out makes a massive difference as well too. All right. Hey, it's the last game on Saturday night, but you would almost say it's the best game. I'll tell you what, my co-host with the most, mm-hmm. he's going to be Chubbs Farquhar up for this one. I'll tell you what. Port Adelaide versus the Crows. It is the showdown. It is the number one game in Adelaide all season. They literally hate each other. Jay Dog, give us a bit of a background. Oh, who you're going with big Saturday. and why. I'm gonna I'm just going Port. It's just Port because you cannot play like you did last week at home. No. Uh thanks, Peps. Um big Saturday. Uh my team, hockey team, the Jags versus the Saints. Finish that game. We're gonna have a big win, and then we're gonna watch Port Adelaide have a big win as well. So for me, Port Adelaide all the way. It's a real rivalry. It's a real hate. None is manufactured crap. Port for me is the real is 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 the team is going to win by seven goals. And Dixon is due. Oh please, God, please. Otherwise, that that ship on his arm, 
might have sailed. <laughs> All right. Wanker. <laughs> Wanker, Wanker with an anchor. <laughs> might, once again, I'm telling you now, if, as soon as you get shit tats, your career is in the bin. <laughs> All right, let's move over to Sunday. The t- the Battle of the Birds, Wet Birds, the um, Hawks, Hawks of Hawthorne at 1.10 p.m. versus the Wet Toast Eagles. 16th versus 8th, but let's just say you could almost say it's 18th versus 18th because Hawthorne are poo at the moment yep. and West Coast are not pl- are playing outside of Perth means yeah, they're poo as well too. <laughs> now, the only reason I'm going with West Coast is who's the less poor out of these two teams? And with yep. the amount of pa- talent that West Coast have on the park, even though they've got quite a few out, mm-hmm. they still have enough calibre to get across the line. They'd have to. Yep. Well, well, they would – Perth, mind you, they'd lock down – they've locked down at the moment. They'd lock these, this team out <laughs> if they lost to Hawthorne this weekend. And I'm going by seven goals to the West Coast Eagles. I just think they're going to have enough tall timber down front. Yep. Hawthorne don't have enough to stop that. Yeah, I'm with you. West Coast – oh, sorry. No, I'm going to go hmm. – I'm – Oh, one goal to West Coast. One wet goal. toast. Wet toast. Yeah, one slice. Just... Wet toast by one slice. One All slice. right. Uh, Western Bulldogs versus Carlton. Jeez, how is this right? Carlton win one game, and now they're talking about finals. <laughs> are you surprised, Peps? No. For the life no. of you, for the for the life of you on this earth, are you surprised? That's always a conversation. It, no, no. Um, <laughs> mind you, I will also say the Sopranos, the Sopranos has had record streaming so far this week. And um, Goodfellas is number one on Netflix because <laughs> you just want to get around them. You just want to get around them. Oh god! The doggies cannot do what they did two weeks, like they did last week. They were the number one team for the first seven weeks of the season for a reason. Hey, hey. their midfield share, bats share deeper. That, share that with your team. Yeah, but don't care about that. They batted that they they bat deeper than the mid eighties West Indies team. That's how far their <laughs> midfield bats. All right, Carlton. They've got two players. Walsh and Mackay. Stop those two. There's no Carlton. Oh, last and, week you had Pips, you had, you had Crips back in uh, Brownlow. Oh, goodness gracious. My son could have beaten Crips in a, in a, in a foot-to-foot race. He <laughs> looks cooked, man. But mind you, Sam Walsh is a gun. Mm. And, yeah, he should be all Australian this year. He is a superstar. He is not the best uh, 19-year-old playing in the league at the moment. That would be hey. Cozzy Pickett. But I'm going with the doggies because I'm just going with a team that's more reliable. Yeah, doggies, doggies by a lot. Doggies and it's at team. Marvel, and they don't lose at the big, shiny, chrome dome kennel out there. Last game for the weekend, 4.40 p.m. our time. Yeah. Seventh versus ninth, Brisbane Lions versus the Fremantle Shockers, the Wankers with Anchors, as we're known, at the Gabba. Look, the Lions probably played their best game of the week, sorry, all season last week, and happened to be against your mob. You saw them always, last week. Always, yeah. How would you rate them? Where would you put them? Uh, Port Adelaide are just the Brisbane Lions bitches. Okay. They always beat us. Um, So they were clean. <laughs> they were smart. They were good. Joey Danaher looked good. That Charlie Cameron was back. back. Charlie Cameron was back. They had Dan back Harris. He, oh. Did old Staples face play? Uh, No. Yes, he did because Hamish Hartley gave away a free kick to him. So, yes, he did. Mitch Robinson, beautiful. Okay, I'm going with the Lions with this one by about seven goals. I think this is going to be a bit of a run in the park. Go over 39 and a half points with this one, I reckon. Yeah, I'm going to go – what would you say? How many goals did you say? I said 39 and a half, I think. I seven, said seven. seven go to eight. We'll round it off at eight. All right. I'm eight, go sixes, with, I'm, six, eight to 48. Yeah, that gets you. I'm going, to, I'm going to go with seven goals. I'm going to go with your tip as well, seven goals. All right, beautiful. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, there and, mind you, children of all ages, there's your tips for this week. I know it's late, but, hey, better late than never. I always say that to my wife. Now, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, to all the mothers out there, to all the, the mums – have a fantastic Mother's Day. Dana, that's my mum, and my magnificent wife, have a fantastic Mother's Day. You want to wish your mum and your beautiful wife sure. happy Mother's Day? Happy Mother's Day, Margarita, and happy Mother's Day, Alira. Beautiful. Snap Second of all, um, if you haven't filled out our, our listener feedback survey, we've got one question, and it's simply this, why us? Why lace out? You can write as much as you like. It's as simple as that. Why us? And last but not least, if your toilet pipes get ever clogged or your sewage pipes get clogged, call CMT Drain Services. They came in and fixed my house the other day and they were sensational. Call Teaser, tell him Peps from Lace Out, an absolute superstar, another 300 game superstar of the East Killer Football Club, two time premiership player. And I've got one more thing, Peps. Go for it, buddy. 
We've got our two for one uh, Sharon Ooh. discount. Yep. <laughs> what do they have to say at the checkout? Uh, lace out when they're at the checkout. One word, lace out. It doesn't matter if it's capitals or lowercase, and you get a 30% discount. That, off that's almost list. two for one. Exactly right, Jay Dog. Okay, look, hope your team wins this week. We'll be back on Tuesday night. Make sure you're there. But like I said, I'm Peps, the great man, Jay Dog. Hopefully, your team wins and have a great football loving weekend. See you later, listeners.